to Islam Channel. Um, I uh, have to say that uh, you've been uh, variously described as the ultimate American hero. And the subject of a lot of controversy. Uh, that's Why a nice way. I was going to say something a bit more controversial <laughs> than that. Uh, this weekend at the Global Peace and Unity Conference, uh, one of the p parliamentarians, a senior parliamentarian, uh, suggested that perhaps you're, uh, you were responsible for propagating messages of uh, conspiracy stories of uh, the, the United States government being responsible as a uh, for killing its own citizens. So incredibly, were, incredible. To range. Incredible. He was there and I was there and uh, he could have addressed me directly and he didn't have, uh, I guess, the, the necessary uh, uh, motivation or enthusiasm or disposition to actually come over to me and ask me those questions. It was very easy to do that. Well, look, he's not the only one who said these things. That is correct. So, so just before we go into the details of this, so you know, why have you become the all-American hero for what, what, what happened on 9-11? Well, well, Carl, let's put it this way. I am just uh, not the all-American hero, but uh, I just did what it was right on that on that day. Uh, I believe that there were many heroes. Many people did the, the, the unthinkable and the uh, uh, biggest outreach to try to help other people on that day. Many died uh, doing, doing so. Uh, you know, sadly, many didn't have the opportunity to tell their stories. I was able to tell my story from the very beginning, and in a way, I became the image of 9-11, especially for the Latino community, because I was Hispanic, and uh, there was not enough uh, people with the ability to talk English and Spanish at that time coming out on the news but me, and that basically gave me a free reign with uh, the with the media at that time, so that's basically. Uh, how, how many uh, Hispanic people were caught up in that? Particular? Around eight hundred, eight hundred and sixty, uh, uh, around those numbers. The problem is that we don't know exactly how many because a lot of people married uh, American people with their names. They had to change their names. So from Lopez, they became a Smith. So we didn't. Did you say one hundred and sixty or eight hundred and sixty? Eight hundred and sixty. Eight hundred and sixty. Yeah. yeah. So that's quite a significant proportion yes, of those yes, killed. Oh, yes, absolutely. absolutely. But well, you have to think that the majority of the people that uh, were in the building early is usually the support people from, uh, uh, let's say, uh, 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 kitchens, uh, the maintenance, the electricians, uh, people that work on delivery, on the mail rooms. And obviously, these are the people that uh, support a whole corporation. And what were you doing in the tower? I work in the building as a janitor. I was the caretaker of uh, all the stairwells of the North Tower. I worked in the building for 20 years, and I had to clean 110 floors of stairwells. From the 106th floor, actually, I started. I didn't. I usually didn't do the 110. Uh, from the 106th floor, uh, story uh, uh, floor, uh, all the way down to the to the to the lobby, and I will do that every day. And what happened on the 11th? On 9-11, I came in late. Uh, I went straight to the basement, and I was there with my supervisor, Antoni Saltaramacchia, and 14 other people. When we hear at 8.46, an explosion that went boom, very loud, pushes upwards. When they push us upwards, all the walls cracked. The full ceiling fell on top of us. The sprinkler system got activated. Everybody started screaming in horror because we didn't know what happened. And the first thing that comes to my mind is that a generator just blew up on the mechanical room. The mechanical room was located right below us. The building has six up levels of basement, B1, B2, all the way down to B6. I was on B1. The explosion came from between B2 and B3. That's how we felt it. Now, I work in the building, Carl, for 20 years. I would know exactly the difference between an explosion coming from the bottom and one coming from the top. This one came from the bottom and prior to the plane hitting the tower. Now, when I went to verbalize it, because everybody's screaming in horror, and in total despair at that moment, when I went to verbalize it, we hear, bah! This is six to seven seconds after the initial explosion. And it was the impact. It sounded like an impact all the way on the top of the building. And then an explosion. And a person comes running into the office saying, explosion, explosion, hands extended, burned 33% of his body, all the skin hanging from under his armpits, pe peeled off all the way to the top of the fingertips and missing pieces of his face. And I said, what are you doing? And, and you know, what, what happened? This guy was Felipe David, a black guy that I never met before from Honduras who worked actually uh, filling up uh, those uh, vending machines with uh, supplies, soda, candies, etc. And he was burned 33% of, of his body from that first explosion. Now, 
when I see this, everybody's screaming in horror. I say, don't move because I was going to pick up to pick up, uh, I mean, to pick up the phone to call the uh, emergency medical unit that was located on the South Tower. When I went to pick it up, bah, another explosion. And the building shakes so much. And remember, the building was designed to oscillate because of the wind factor, but it oscillated so much that the wall started cracking. You could hear the cracking. And everybody started running inside the office thinking that it was an earthquake because the floor is moving below us. So at that very moment, I realized that, you know, nobody was helping the man. So I put bandages around him and I said, you know, we got to get out. We got to get out. Nobody was taking the leadership at that time. And I have to take it upon myself because I survived the bomb of 1993. When I survived that bomb in 1993, I was talking inside of an elevator that time for hours. So I knew that we have to take action right away. So I started leading this whole group of people out from the office to the uh, area of the, uh, um, uh, the, well, they wanted to go to the, to the lobby. And I said, no, don't go to the lobby because that's probably what the problem is. So I lead them all the way to the loading dock area. The loading dock area, we led them all the way uh, straight to a, to a hill outside the building. And that's when I see an ambulance. I stop the ambulance. I put Mr. Felipe David with the help of other people. We put him inside the uh, ambulance. And that's when I hear for the first time that a plane hit the building. A plane hit the building, a plane hit the building. When I turn around, it was a security so guard. So this, was this the first plane? Or first plane. So you mean you had injured, you had victims who had body parts missing, yes. their skin peeled off. You're saying before a plane hit the building. That is correct. That's that, exactly that, my experience. So th there have been suggestions that, correct. that you have uh, put forward the notion that the government was complicit in uh, trying to kill its own citizens. They have and, put and so that many this words, was not yeah. the act of terrorists in a plane attack on the Twin Towers. What do you say to that? Uh, they have put so many words in my mouth. They have twisted and changed my uh, testimony. My testimony is exactly the same that I, that I did on 9-11. They say, oh, you changed your story. No, no, it's exactly the same. It hasn't changed. If you get the transcripts from television from that day and put them out today, it's exactly the same thing. That I say the word rumble, and, and then I say explosion. They say that you change rumble for explosion. No. When they pull me from the rubble, CNN came and said, you have 30 seconds to go on the air. 30 seconds to go on the air and tell your story. 30 seconds? That is impossible to tell exactly what happened. So I gave them, you know, in the middle of the fog of war, what it was at the moment, you know, my reality at that moment. And for me, rumble and explosion is the same thing. It's just like the vanilla is explosion to me. And uh, uh, when they, later on, I took the whole experience and I did exactly the same thing that I was right Let's now. absolutely yeah. clear. Do you think that the United States government was complicit or in any which way involved in uh, orchestrating attacks on the Twin Towers? And I will tell you straight, I believe that the U.S. government had indication that an attack was going to happen, an imminent take the right precautions, and information was given, not by me, this is not coming from me, it's coming from the government own uh, uh, information, uh, the, an FBI uh, uh, agent identified the hijackers, and basically was told to stop the investigation by a, by a supervisor. So, so let me just ask you again, just so that we're clear, you, you may have, uh, you, you seem to be suggesting that perhaps the government was in possession of information. If, of information, but, but, uh, to uh, say, uh, but to say that the government actually killed its own people, I never said that. I have never said that. The reason that I'm asking for a new investigation is to find out exactly what happened because we did not get all the answers. And because I am ac actually asking for that information, they put words in my mouth, you see? Because I don't say, the government did it. You don't see me going saying 9-11 is an inside job, the government did it, the government... So do you stuff. think that there were hijackers of a plane? That... I, I know there were hijackers. I know there were hijackers. Why, how do I know? But basically by the evidence put forward. Is that ev evidence correct? I don't know. You see, that's what the problem is. We need to get the real evidence that the government have that, remember, the 9-11 Commission, this information is still closed. Whatever testimony was there is closed. It's not available to the general public. 
And that's have been the problem from the very beginning. We need to know exactly what happened to draw our own conclusions. But for people to say that I say that it was the government who did, no. What happened was there was a lawsuit. I did a lawsuit against the president looking for information. And that lawyer, uh, Phil Berg, started putting every allegation, every conspiracy theory on that lawsuit. And I did not agree. And I did not, at, until this day, agree with many of the allegations on that lawsuit. So what did, I do? What, did I, what did I do at that time? I fired the lawyer. I removed myself from the lawsuit, you see, to distance myself. But the information stayed there. So they say that, you know, because of the lawsuit said that Willie Rodriguez is uh, 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 saying that the president and everybody was involved in the assassination of 3,000 people, they said it was me. No, definitely not. I stay away from that. I don't agree with that. And I say it again, I do not agree with the lawsuit. The lawsuit was failing from the very beginning because they put every allegation of every conspiracy theory. What was your, what's your motivation in, 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 in uh, traveling and talking and appearing on platforms and talking on stages about your experiences there? Well, it's just funny that you say I made it a career. I made it a mission, actually. I made it a mission because I needed to get answers. I represent the victims of 9-11. Uh, I lost 200 friends on 9-11, 200 friends that I would never see again. I was, I am, I was not, I am a living miracle because I survived by a lie in that, in that moment made it impossible for me to be here. Now, what do I have to do to glorify that second opportunity? I gotta continue telling the truth in the face of tyranny, I have to continue to tell the truth of the victims, survivors, and those affected by the event. I am actually um, a leader of the Hispanic Victims Group and the Victim Support Group. So I have a mission. This is a mission. So I cannot stop that mission because some people don't agree with my experience. I was there. I experienced this event. Nobody's telling me to tell you this or to tell anybody that, you know. Uh, what I'm trying to do is to get the information out to be able to get closing, emotional closure for the events, for me and for the sake of the families. Just let, for, for our viewers, let's get some clarity here. Yeah. Are you saying that these are victims or families of the, some of the victims of the uh, Twin Towers disaster, of the 9-11 disaster, who previously were unable to receive any compensation or benefit, who, as a result of your efforts, or partly as a result of your efforts, were able to receive benefits. Is that what you're saying? A hundred percent. You said it correctly. Uh, there was a person in charge of uh, the distribution of funds of the federal uh, compensation program named um, um, Kenneth Feinberg. Uh, I asked Kenneth Feinberg to give me a hand to set up an amnesty program. I would show up on all his press conferences. I would interrupt him constantly to ask him what will he do for those undocumented people that work in the World Trade Center. And he said, well, the problem is that we cannot identify them. And I said, if I can identify them, will you help me? He said, yes. So I went to all the Latino television shows and I asked for a PSA, a public service announcement, and they gave it to me. And I was able to put together a database, a data program of all these people and brought it to him. And I said, now I have the people, will you help me? I need an amnesty program to help these people. Then nobody's helping them. So they said, okay, now that you have that, yes, we will do it. And within 90 days, we were able to get the amnesty program going. And how many people have benefited from that? 2,600 people. 2,600 people? 2,600 people. They're now receiving compensation and benefits. Absolutely. Now, what about the, the, your pursuit of truth, uh, the truth on this issue? No, no, be, 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 well, besides that, I, I, I work on the um, Tax Relief Act for Victims of Terrorism. That means that any victim of terrorism from now on doesn't have to pay taxes for two years. We didn't have that before. Uh, we change uh, the compensation program three times. We work with uh, uh, Red Cross, Salvation Army, Catholic Charities to establish programs for distribution of funds. We did, uh, uh, and when I say we, I'm talking about my organization, the Hispanic Victims Group, which is me, basically. Uh, and uh, we establish uh, uh, scholarship grants for students. And you can check this all out on the legislation and, and, and other programs. On my pursuit of truth, we have created such an amount of pressure that a lot of information has become available that wasn't available before. A lot of people has come forward 
with information, uh, internal information that we didn't even know it was available. Uh, I'll give you an example, you know, for, for, and I'm not saying it's because of me, but I'm saying it's because of the pressure. People that before was uh, very adamant to testify and to give information, I, Richard Clark, Richard Clark, the czar of intelligence for George Bush that basically quit his job goes to the 9-11 Commission and opens his mouth and says, we lied to the families, we failed to the families, you know, we failed you. And uh, it talks about how they wanted to use 9-11 to create a war in Iraq, to go in and invade Iraq, things like that. When you start exposing these uh, lies, lies, we're able to get to the bottom of the things. And I think that seven years after 9-11, I have been able to be a political pundit on many levels, and uh, I'm still an activist. I'm, I am an activist, but a lot of people don't agree with this kind of activism, and they start putting labels on you to stop you, and that's what I get. And I don't care because I'm going around the world. I'm, I met with kings, I met with prime ministers of many countries, with presidents of many countries, with members of parliaments of many countries. So, you know, if they have this vested interest on listening to what the victims that were in the World Trade Center have to say, not what the government is saying. There's something there, but we want to know what it is. We're not going out around accusing people. We want to get that information to know exactly what happened, that's all. So, uh, as a, a conclusion to our uh, interview, William Rodriguez, tell us, what do you have to say to those people who feel that they, uh, it would be a mistake uh, to, to share a platform with you? How ridiculous, and you know, here, here, here I am, you know, seven years after, I am a survivor. I am a person that uh, experienced the event. I am an activist. I was a person that was wine and dine by the White House. They wanted me to run for political office. This is the guy that is gonna get the Hispanic Latino vote, 30 million voters, and I took the training. You see, I have met most of the politicians in the United States that are very influential. Uh, you can go to any level and they will know who I am. And I get their respect because I don't talk about only what happened on 9-11. I talk about the issues of the community. I talk about those disenfranchised because of 9-11, uh, you know, the problems of uh, uh, losing our rights. They have used 9-11 and basically that's a one-known issue for everything that is number one. Uh, when they want to tap your phones now, that is, uh, is, 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 is illegal in the United States now, before it wasn't legal, it's because of 9-11. They want to open your emails because of 9-11. They want to stop you and put you in a, in a room without the right to a lawyer for an indefinite time, is because of 9-11. This is the politics of fear that we have been receiving because of my event. So of course, how come can I, I cannot go and talk about those issues because they're using my disaster, my, my, my despair, my pain for a political purpose. If they don't want to share the stage, they don't want to share a, a forum, you know, they have a problem. They have a problem because they are not facing the issues the way they are. They use a tragedy, they have taken a tragedy, and they have manipulated that tragedy, and they have not come forward with the reality of, you know, what, what's going on in the world. You see, 9-11 is not only affecting the United States, it's affecting the whole world. And when you start putting, oh, no, 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 I'm putting labels, you are closing the door to understanding, to compassion, because there's no compassion there. You see, you have to give me the time, and you have to get an argumentation and debate to balance your view. You're not doing that. So if you don't want to share my space on the stage, I am not losing, I'm having the audience. It doesn't matter. And I will talk anywhere. People were angry when I said that I was going to go to, to places like Iran because they invited me there. But I will go anywhere in the world that they want to hear about the issues of the victims. I'm, and I'm sorry to add this, but you know, here I am, seven years after, talking about 9-11, talking about the first responders. We have the first responders were the people that went to uh, help once the towers collapsed to look for the uh, human remains of the people that we lost. And now they're sick and dying. We're talking about over 10,000 people from the 60,000 people that went there to help. All the rescue dogs are dead. And guess what? There's not a single program to help these people. They're dying. But the, the government don't want to recognize them because of the litigation that that will create. Now, we're spending billions upon billions of, do of dollars in Iraq, Afghanistan, and other things that doesn't 
actually tra translate to the needs of the community? Why can't we take and, 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 and put some program in place once and for all to help these heroes that help us so much on that moment of need? So if they don't want to understand that I speak about those issues, it's not my loss, it's their loss. William Rodriguez, thank you for joining us. Thank you.